Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the share trading series uh, uh, in my channel. So I've been making share trading videos for beginners like me. I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not an expert in share trading. I started earlier this year for the first time in my life uh, about share trading. And uh, what I tried to do in this channel was to you know explain to beginners like me and give them confidence that how simple share trading could be, especially in UK and especially you know with the tax-free advantages that uh, uh, share trading in UK comes with with regards to the ISA and everything. So I've been explaining about the basics of share trading and also I picked uh, my portfolio about five, six months back and I explained why I'm investing in those shares. And we've seen consistently how much profit they've made. Like some of them have made like, you know, 300, 400 percent profits. So I've been explaining why those shares are making profits and how we pick them. And so it's helpful for others as well who see these videos. And many of them have given me feedback that they've bought some of these shares like GGP, for example, which has made like more than 300% from the time that we have started talking about the shares. So today we'll be talking about my portfolio again, kind of a November and December update. Uh, I usually post a monthly update. Miss the November update, so it's kind of a November and December update. As uh, I talked about Saimi in the Tamil version of the video yesterday night, I'm so happy that it's actually about 15% up from the time that I talked about yesterday night, today in, in, uh, in the Monday uh, in market. So. Uh, pretty happy about uh, you know the confidence that I had been talking about in Saimi yesterday, right? And you know, it jumped almost 15% today, and it's an organic growth as well for Saimi. So, uh, we'll talk about a couple of shares. Usually, most of our shares have consistently grown, um, they've become you know positive uh, over a period of time from the time we posted. Tiziana Life Census um, has actually dropped from last month, uh, in fact, from the time that uh, the demerger was announced, and I explained about the demerger in my previous video as well. Or you get a free share for every uh, um, stem, every tell share that you have the the stem printer technology, which is for uh, cancer detection, the cancer diagnostics, um, breast cancer diagnostics, has been created as a new company called AcuStem uh, on 30th of October, and uh, how you'll get a free share for every share that you held, hold on uh, TZM Life Census. So this is kind of an elephant in the room. So we'll start with this. Uh, I'll share this Excel as well with all the material that I prepared uh, then in the in the description link. So Tiziana Life Sciences, obviously it started at, at around 90 pence when I talked about it in July, but, but at, even at that time I said how it had even dropped to like nearly 38 pence or 30 pence, uh, then bounced back strongly. And at peak of it, it was around 3 pounds. And, you know, last month, uh, around the end of October when we spoke about it, it was nearly around 2 pounds before the uh, demerger. And from that point of time, it's been steadily declining and it's probably right now about you know, 83, 84 pence, which is nearly... You know, 122 percent decline from that point onwards, and a uh, uh, few reasons for it. Obviously, uh, the first thing is the Acquistem demerger. A part of the company's uh, um, portfolio, or part of the company's uh, work in terms of cancer research, is being kind of demerged into a new share. So we'll talk about what happens to the demerger shares. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know, if you hold your uh, shares in different accounts, you will experience different uh, um, perspective for the, the Acquistem shares. In HNL, Huggies and Landstone, for example. If you hold your uh, um, Tiziana Life Sciences shares in your uh, in your account in, in HNL, you will see an entitlement row. You'll see a line called entitlement to Akistam shares because they've been doing this for a while. And so they've created an entity called entitlement where uh, if you get a, a branched off share from a company, a company is demerged from an existing company, they create an entitlement because they are the whole market. They cover the whole market, right? So they they were ready for it. And this entitlement will turn into shares when the trading happens. So the trading hasn't started yet. Uh, the CEO in the investor call on 2nd December confirmed that it's probably going to be early 2020-21 when the potential date uh, for listing of Akistam shares in LSE will happen. So um, in different in different share trading accounts, like for example, Free Trade confirmed by notification saying that they will allocate the Akistam shares, but they don't have an entitlement row. So they're not able to show it in the, uh, they didn't explicitly say it, but they're not able to show it, but they will give you the shares when uh, it becomes, when it uh, starts trading. For, uh, trading 2 and 2, for example, they previously confirmed that, you know, they'll give you a cash equivalent when the trading happens, depending upon what the initial price of the uh, accustomed shares are. So this was again talked about in the investor call. I'll give you the link to the investor call as well. You can go and have a look at it. So that's about the accustomed demerger. A lot of people have asked me, you know, we haven't seen the shares in our account. So that's the answer to it. So what happened in the investor call and what is in pipeline, you know, do I expect the shares to go up? I obviously still hold a lot of these shares and I expect the shares to significantly go up. And it's a long term, right? So any biopharma, uh, you need to have confidence in the research and development the company has. 
So the, uh, the one thing that they're talking about is they're moving to the main market. So they're currently listed in the AIM market, which is the alternative investment market. We explained what the alternative investment market in some of my previous videos. Uh, you don't get institutional investors in the alternative investment market. The the uh, uh, institutional investors will come when the uh, when a share gets listed in the main stock exchange of uh, London uh, in market. So. Uh, when it moves from AIM market to December 2020, in December 2020 to the main market, you'll probably get a lot of institutional investors. That's the hope. Uh, again, you know, that's the timeline that they were talking about in the investor call is December 2020. Their top product is the nasally administered uh, Foralimab, which is the fully human monoclonal antibody. In fact, design licenses claim that this is the only fully human monoclonal antibody. A lot of monoclonal antibodies exist. I can read about monoclonal antibodies uh, online. I mean, I'm not a medical expert, but you know, there's a lot of research going into it. But a lot of it is humanized uh, monoclonal antibody, which means that there is a uh, component of DNA of a, of an, uh, a non-human uh, component, like you know, mice or something, that's added to it to enhance the research. Uh, the foralimab is probably the only fully human monoclonal antibody, which probably puts it in a special position. They're using it uh, for nasally treating the COVID-19 patients in Brazil with the results they're expecting before the, or conclusion expected before the end of the year, before Christmas. So we can probably wait for the results to come from that. And if it shows positive results, then that could be huge for uh, the company. Uh, also the foralimab and the human uh, monoclonal antibodies can be used for a variety of diseases, what they have said in the investor call, like you know diabetes, uh, type one diabetes, uh, Crohn's disease, for which there's probably Crohn's disease, you know, it's probably uh, people who know it will know that there's not much treatment available. So you know, a lot of the diseases that they're attacking don't have conventional treatments available today. So it could be, these are, these are the research and developments that makes this company huge. I'm not promoting this company, I get nothing from promoting a company. I'm just expressing my confidence in a company um, and why I've invested in it. You can refer to the links that I'm, I'll give uh, with regards to the investor call and the other details that I spoke about. So obviously it fell along with the uh, Kistam D-Major. Uh, when the vaccine news came out, a lot of COVID testing companies um, fell in the value. ODX, NCYT, VCT, everything. But but this is not a COVID company. I mean, this is not just a COVID play alone. There's a lot more that is happening. But the risks are that it is not yet profitable. Like most biopharma companies in their research stages is not yet profitable. Could be a, a long wait uh, because, you know, most of the trials could run for months. Unlike COVID where most of it was expirated, normal biopharma research runs for months and months together. So this could be probably, you know, a few months before the trials become really successful and formal for Alimab is approved for human treatment. The market sentiment still treats it like a COVID play. So every time there's a vaccine news, probably people will start selling it. But in a long term, I think it could be really huge. That's my uh, take on Tizian Life Sciences. So moving on, um, Saimi, uh, Supply Me, we've spoken about it. In fact, I drew it on a whiteboard explaining what Saimi does, what Supply Me does, why they are a uniquely positioned fintech company and why they are expected to be a revolution in terms of the fintech industry itself and, and what they are doing to inventory monetization. I actually drew it out in a whiteboard and explained it, the, the whole scenario, I think in my August video probably. I'll give the link to that Supply Me uh, video as well. But uh, they have also been steadily declining. From, obviously, from the time that I posted, um, I had bought it much, much earlier. But from the time I posted to now, it's still a 22% increase. But from its peak price in the last uh, couple of months or three months, I would say uh, it's fallen down nearly um, you know, 113%. From nearly 0 0.8 pence um, or 0 0.008 pounds, uh, less than 1p. It's still less than 1p, but it's, it's now 0.3p or 0.39p, roughly about 0.4p. But... Uh, the, the main reason is the revenue numbers have not been confirmed. Audited revenue numbers have not been confirmed. Uh, there's a lot of uh, contracts that have uh, not closed out financially, the storm over, and there's a lot of numbers that have not been confirmed on paper yet. They've been announced, but they've not been confirmed on paper yet. There is a lot of skepticism that uh, will this fintech um, um, inventory monetization requirement continue after the uh, COVID-19? So there's a lot of speculation there as well. Uh, but... The recent RNSs, the, the the four or five materialistic RNSs, material RNSs, uh, what they confirm is basically that about 152 companies globally that have, that have Europe in mainly Europe that have uh, that they have gone through the gross origination contract stage. Gross origination is like they've confirmed the initial onboarding um, for these companies, and it's nearly 1.9 billion uh, inventory asset values, up 16% from September 2020. 
So the contracts that they have announced, they've actually announced these names on RNSS in the last four or five months. It's like, you know, companies like multi-billion dollar industries like Jindal Steel, Carry4. Um, I've even tweeted about some of these companies. They're huge companies and they've named these companies. Uh, they are not, Simon is not aim listed to name these customers on an RNS, um, you know, means that they actually have a origination contract with them. So they're not, they're not now talking about speculation. They're actually naming customers. They started naming, you know, real material customers, big customers, huge customers. Um, and they're just waiting for the revenue results. When the revenue results are, are published, audited revenue results are published, you know, potentially their revenue could be huge, you know, upwards of 2 million pounds for the first time. They're probably seeing a revenue that is so huge. You know, they've never achieved this much revenue before in their previous results. So what are the risks? There's too much coverage now, too many interviews. Uh, the CEO is probably appearing on every YouTube channel. I, I'll probably even interview him one day, I think. Um, but that there's too much coverage is probably not doing so well for supply me because earlier when there is a positive news or generally when there's a positive news for a company, the shares do, do well. But when there's too much positive news, there's also too much negative news equally because you know there's, there's so much news out there and it's not doing well for this company now. It's probably better that they actually come out when the NDA allows them to name third parties, when the NDA allows them to name contracts, that will help the price. Otherwise, you know, if they can't uh, name the third party, just saying that we've got to to the bank is not going to help them. So I think you know, the future RNSS with solid names, solid numbers is probably going to help them. Uh, but again, this is one of my biggest investments, um, probably the monetary value. This is probably the, the biggest investment that I have right now, I would say. So again, moving on, um, the top portfolios from my uh, previous shares, DGP has done probably phenomenally well. In fact, I think this is the first share that I shared in my portfolio when I drew it out on the whiteboard. I think, uh, you know, it's grown from nearly seven pence in May uh, when I first mentioned it in my video on 7th, on 12th of May. Right now it is trading at around like 32 pence roughly, about 357%. And it, it went up nearly about 33, 34 pence, which is 371%. It's phenomenal. I mean, if you've invested a thousand pounds in it, it's probably sitting at around close to 5,000 pounds, which is phenomenal growth for it in the last six months. And uh, this is not affected by COVID and it's grown from strength to strength. And most of the shares have had an oscillation, have it a drop and come back. This has probably never dropped significantly ever. And it's one of the most steadiest growths that I've ever seen um, in the shares that we have been talking about. It's gradual, but super steady. And the maiden resource estimate is still not out there. It could be quite big. And all the partnerships that they have announced, all the drilling results they announced, have all been positive so far. So there's only positive news that's coming out for this company. And it's probably going to be positive for the next few months as well. So I've probably top sliced a little bit when it crossed around 300%, but I'm still going to maintain nearly 70-80% of the portfolio. Eurasia Mining, again, we talked about in July. It's been a long wait. It's been probably about five months, four months wait, but people have waited for nearly a year for it and it's turning out to be really fruitful. It's a full sale process that is in progress that I talked about in uh, in uh, July. So they've recently announced the Form 2.9 of the takeover code, which signals that the end could be nearing right now and the price of the takeover code, takeover is expected to be a minimum of 75 pence. A lot of people are speculating it could be higher as well, but... Uh, you know, uh, the takeover price, most of them agree that it could be a minimum of 75 pence. So when the takeover gets confirmed, the share could get suspended, but there could probably be one or two days of trading before that officially gets confirmed. But it's up nearly 113%, uh, right from about 19 pence. It went up to even 45 pence, about 137 pence. So it is even doubled, more than doubled in value from the time that we talked about. Again, a very solid share. I'm not sold anything. I'm going to maintain uh, this portfolio till the full sale process completes. The other shares in my holding, obviously, Omega Diagnostics, ODX, uh, we spoke about. It's a COVID test kit manufacturing company. It has increased from 36 pence that we talked about in July to about 55 pence now, but it roughly, it went about 1.2 pounds and then dropped about 131%, less than half its value from uh, the last couple of months because of the vaccine news again. Most of the COVID testing companies um, took a massive hit after the vaccine. People thinking that you don't need testing kits after the vaccine. But you know what AstraZeneca, what AstraZeneca and other, other vaccine companies said is that you do need testing, uh, especially the lateral flow antigen testing, uh, because you need to know that you have antibodies. You don't have antibodies before the vaccine. Once you take the vaccine, you need to demonstrate that you've got antibodies by taking a ODX-like test. And then, you know, a few weeks later, you again need to take another test. And vaccine, they've said that they need to repeat the dose 
every three months or six months. So which means that you probably for a couple of vaccines, you're probably taking about six or seven um, tests that, that prove that you still have antibodies. So the testing kit, like especially the antigen testing kit, they go hand in hand with vaccine to prove the efficiency of the vaccine. So which means that it's not going away, it's probably going to be much more um, required. You know, the testing kit requirement is going to increase more, which means that at that point, uh, ODX is probably going to come back very strong. Emogenics, we've talked about a lot about this company. A long-term stock, I'm, I'm not uh, selling it, but again, it's it's probably dropped uh, from its peak price about 90%. Again, it's an R&D company, research and development. The good thing about it is the 60 million pounds They've agreed financing with a venture capitalist called Mint Capital to exploit the research and development, which is huge confidence in their work and potential for a company to invest this much amount or it's basically there's a financing agreement. It's not just money given to the company, but it's huge confidence shown on the on the potential that uh, uh, Hemo have in terms of the products as well. So again, um, a company for long term is probably going to be like, you know, you just keep it for six months or one year and forget about it. But you know, some point of time when even one of their products hit the market is probably going to be huge for uh, Emogenex. So that's with regards to the portfolio. So another uh, thing that I talked about is uh, free trade. Um, you know, when we did the video comparing free trade to HNL, there's only the the version that uh, that the three pound version that was there, where you had to pay three pound for the ISA, otherwise it was free for everyone. They introduced a version called Free Trade Plus, which has changed everything and has probably become the most preferential uh, trading platform in UK. I would say, at least for me. Um, and I'll explain why I'll do a separate demo of Free Trade Plus and explain the the potential of Free Trade Plus and why it's probably for someone who's starting up chart trading, this is probably the best uh, uh, chart trading platform out there. But um, if till that point of time, if you are still you know trying to make up for this year or you know, if you have investment plans and if you want to open a, an ISA account in UK, I would pr pretty much advise Free Trade Plus. I'll give you a referral link as well. Again, uh, you don't have to use it, but if you use it, you will also probably get a free share when you open a free trade plus account. So the referral link is there in the description as well. But I'll make a separate video if you want to wait about it. You can wait, see the advantages of free trade plus compared to the other apps before you can make a decision. So until next time, thank you. Bye.